talk about hacks to scale your e-commerce email marketing. So we're going straight into email marketing now. And today we have Casey Luck. Casey is the founder and CEO of Luck & Co, an agency helping seven and eight figure e-commerce brands maximize their email and SMS revenue. Casey and her team frequently double the email and SMS revenue of brands they work with. So their secret, a combination of customer centric approach being good with numbers and having fun with content. So thank you very much for being here, Casey. Thank Welcome. you. I'm so excited to talk about email, my favorite thing. <laughs> 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 and we have Jacob George here with us today. Jacob's true passion is problem solving with five plus years of experience in software sales, working with leading tech companies from Freshworks to Mailmodo, he is currently pioneering Mailmodo's growth in North America. So thank you so much for being with us here, Jacob. Thank you, Mariana. It's a pleasure to be here. And with Casey as well, looking forward to this chat. Yeah, Me so too. let's jump in it, <laughs> straight in it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about challenges across industries. Uh, Casey, I have a first question for you. Do you see common email marketing challenges across different verticals at Luck & Co? And do any of them stand out as particularly challenging? I would say that the challenges are frequently very similar. The first one is always just growing the list. Everybody wants to grow their email list, their SMS list faster. Um, and it's never growing fast enough <laughs> for most brands. So that's challenge number one. Um, the second challenge is probably just keeping your engagement high. Uh, so things like open rates and click rates. Um, open rates are higher these days just because of the iOS 15 update. So they're a little bit inflated. So it's harder to gauge what's your actual open rate. But when it comes to click rate, it's very easy to track. And um, you know there are more and more emails in people's inboxes. So it's only getting harder and harder to stand out and actually getting people to engage with your content. So that's challenge number two. Um, and challenge number three, maybe um, I would say that it's connecting with the audience. So um, obviously each brand has their own audience and their own voice that they use. And oftentimes um, the brand like likes to do things the way they think they're right. Like, uh, like I like even yesterday I had a conversation with a brand we're working with and they're like, oh, like, why don't we just send like two emails per month and talk about what we think is important, like our YouTube video and like a new product drop. I was like, wait, pause. Can you hear yourself? You want to talk about what you think is important. Did you ask what is important to your customer? So really trying to get into your customers and your subscribers shoes and understand what they're thinking about, how they're thinking like about your product category, what's going through their mind and what would actually help you connect with them. Um, I think very few brands actually do that. And it's a very, like, it's not a super tangible thing. Like you can't measure it. You, you can measure it, but it's not like a direct uh, measurement. And that's why it's so elusive. But I think if you get that right, um, everything else becomes easier with email marketing and with all of your other marketing channels. Yeah. I love that. Would you like to add anything to that, uh, Jacob? I mean, no, I, I think Casey, you're absolutely right. At, especially with the brands wanting to say what they want and what their voice is, right? And sometimes you forget that your customers are coming to you already for your voice. Now let's get into the products. Let's introduce them to what your philosophy is. And these are, I think, crucial things that brands from an early stage could do with something as simple as a welcome series. And that's something that I see that from small companies that are just starting out to much larger companies that they don't utilize that initial first welcome email well to understand their users. So one of the few things that I see that can help is just a welcome series. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yeah, that makes a lot sure. of sense. And uh, actually, so we were talking about like before, like some um, Cross industry challenges. And now, if we focus on e commerce businesses and challenges that they typically face, uh, what do you think those challenges are? And how does email marketing address these issues? 
I'll, I'll go into Casey. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> cool. Um, I actually, honestly, I was talking um, about everything I was talking about is about e-commerce because we only work with e-commerce brands. That's what we specialize in. We, we don't actually work with any other types of businesses, but the challenges I mentioned are true for all different verticals. So whether you're selling apparel or sports goods or skincare or like really anything, if you're in e-commerce, regardless of your industry inside e-commerce, those are the very common challenges and you know, they're true for all companies. Um, the second part of your question, what was it? Like, what's the most how challenging? Do you, how, yeah, how do I address, address, address those issues? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, if I go like one by one back to the challenges that I mentioned, the first one is growing your list. Um, it's something that we focus a lot uh, here at Luck & Co. And that is simply, um, you know, like the, the easiest way to address it is to have a high converting pop-up on your website. And a lot of brands and a lot of email teams kind of have it as a, like the pop-up is a side thing that they do, you know, like, oh yeah, and we also do a pop-up. We focus on the pop-up a lot um, and we continuously track the submit rate because the higher that submit rate, um, the faster your list growth grows, uh, the faster your revenue mail grows. It, it's it's just a, a central thing that has an effect on everything you do in email marketing. So really paying attention to your pop-up, not just like creating it and then leaving it, but continuously A-B testing it. Like literally always be running an A-B test on your pop-up um, is something that I recommend to all of the brands. Um, in terms of engagement uh, with email, here you really just need to continue being very creative all the time, which is tough. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's, it's tough enough to be creative, but it's very tough to be creative all the time, especially when you're sending like two to three emails per week. Um, but finding ways to visually present information that actually grabs people's attention. And the best test of that is sim simply test, send yourself a test, like send a test of the email to your inbox, open it in your, on your phone, open it on your computer. Does it grab your attention? Um, like I, I just find that to be, uh, to be the, the best test. And if we're talking a little bit more tactical, um, we like doing, um, we like adding a lot of engagement into our emails. So things like, oh, can I hover over like images and it would open up certain things in the email uh, or can the user take certain actions inside the email? Um, and not all email platforms actually allow that. Like there are not enough features in many email platforms. We find our ways around uh, and become a little bit hacky. Uh, but I know that I think MailMoto is like, that's what, it's created for is to create emails where like you can add stuff to cart inside the email. Like that's really cool. It's very rare right now. So anything that's rare is going to perform very well because you know, the, any tactic, any hack, anybody shares, the more people use it, the less effective it becomes. And I see very few emails where like you can actually do stuff in the email. So uh, that's definitely a very effective way to address email engagement. And, Connecting with the audience, um, there are a few things. One thing you can do is when you do a pop-up, make it a multi-step pop-up, where in the first step you ask for the people for the person's email address, but in the second pop-up, you actually ask something about the user, uh, the visitor. So are you shopping for yourself or for others? What is the thing that you are looking for in X? And like X is your product category, right? Like when you're shopping underwear, are you looking for comfort? Are you looking for a variety of colors? Are you looking for that the materials are sustainable? So really understanding what is driving the purchasing decision. Um, and collect that data through the pop-up, run surveys, send the survey to your audience through an email. People actually love that. Uh, and we love that because we learn so much about the audience. And then the important thing is actually take the time to analyze all of the data that you collected and be like, oh, okay, so 50% of my audience is actually not shopping for themselves. When they get to my website, they're shopping for a gift. What does that mean for my marketing? What, like, how does that change how I talk to people in my welcome flow? How does that change how I talk to people in my abandoned checkout flow? Um, so collecting data uh, through different ways, through a pop-up, through surveys, through actually talking to people. Uh, I actually love 
doing that and I don't think enough brands do it, reaching out to people and be like, hey, would you be willing to talk to me on the phone for like 15 minutes? Uh, we really want to learn more about our people. Um, and people actually love that. It's, uh, it's very cool. So collecting data and then analyzing data uh, and using it in your marketing. Um, that's how you connect better with your audience. I don't know, Jacob, do you have anything to add? How, how else can people address all of these challenges? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are obviously different solutions out there, Casey. I think you gave a good idea as to how you can touch upon different topics from customer acquisition costs, customer retention. Uh, if I have to just break it down into challenges that I've seen e-commerce businesses help and how uh, email solves, solves for it, uh, I would break it down into mainly six things. Uh, customer ac acquisition costs is always acquiring new customers can be expensive. Everyone knows that. That's why email campaigns can be cost effective. And just bringing a lower CAC and increasing your uh, conversion using personalization, promotional offers. So it just becomes easier. And like you said, Casey, personalization and data collection is so important because the kind of targeting that you do um, and at what journey are you hitting them with personalized information can build upon that trust and loyalty that you are having with your end customer. So I think it, it beautifully connects from when you're looking at different channels, at least with email, start with the story, like with your welcome series. <laughs> I'm saying it over and over again, but I think I'm one thing I want to drive home to whoever's watching is, you know, it's important for all these challenges to come together from the first interaction that you have with your customer. So building a trust and loyal like customer base is so important when you have so many channels today and email can be your most cost effective and easiest one, I would say. And obviously drizzle in the interactivity and you stand out a, a little more as well. Um, and I think just overall, leveraging email marketing effectively in case you would know best for different e-commerce businesses as well you can create a more engaging personalized experience for customers ultimately driving your sales and you can even foster longer relationships but yeah that's like my two cents on what i think certain like your typical challenges are and how email can help with that yeah i love that you brought in I love that you brought mm -hmm. in the customer acquisition cost because that's not something we usually work with because we don't touch acquisition, yeah. but it's obviously like probably the yeah. biggest challenge uh, for e-commerce brands right now. Customer acquisition costs are going so, up like crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And a lot of the things that I talked about, like learning uh, about your audience more, um, asking those questions in the pop-up that gives you an opportunity to segment um, mm -hmm. your flows to segment your campaigns that increase yeah. like that adds personalization that leads to a higher conversion rate you're converting more people uh and as a result your customer acquisition cost goes down so exactly. i love how you beautifully tied all of that up in together yeah awesome. Yeah, uh, Mariana, over to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you i was just going to say that one takeaway that i got from this is that i feel like we don't uh, learn enough from sales people because I feel like our email marketing is almost like you're, you have like this scalable sales team like kind of because you can segment your people into groups and then you can get send them like promotion stuff and whatever th things that actually create value to their journeys and at the same time um, a lot of times like one simple thing like you mentioned Casey which is just like asking the client like the customer what is it that they are actually looking for or why they're here and what's, you know, so what's the reason why they're here? Um, that's what the salesperson would ask in the first place. They would never kind of like try to sell something without asking what the customer is going through and what their need is, right? So I feel like marketing as marketers, this is so important. And sometimes it's just like forget <laughs> that we have to ask stuff from the customer before we actually start kind of like, um, exposing them to a lot of whatever ads or promotions and stuff. 
So yeah, thank you so much. Let's jump into a little bit of best practices. And yeah. I would love if you could summarize, do you have like a way to summarize your email marketing into like a playbook or framework of a few like key points or an acronym, Casey? We don't have an acronym, um, but I can describe how we think about e-commerce marketing in general and then how we approach email marketing specifically high level. Hopefully this high level is helpful for people. Um, but And it actually ties into something that Jacob was talking about. But the way we view e-commerce um, e marketing in general is in three groups of activities, acquisition, conversion, and retention. And historically, acquisition has been the most popular part of this trio and everybody was, ta uh, was talking about acquisition and super sexy everybody was like uh talking on face on facebook how to do facebook ads um and then ios 15 happened and then other uh ios updates happened and now uh acquisition is becoming harder and harder and as a result people are turning more to conversion and retention and are paying more attention to conversion and retention which is great um but you know all three are important so acquisition is how you get people to your site like how do you drive traffic to your website which is your online shop and like without that nothing else happens because everything happens on your website so acquisition is super important as soon as somebody is on your site, then conversion is important. So how do we turn this visitor into a customer? And you know, like under each of these three, there's like a ton we can talk about. So this is really high level, but hopefully it helps people like think about uh, marketing from this like high standpoint. So conversion, how do we convert these visitors into customers? And there's conversion that happens directly on the website. And there's a field that's super interesting called conversion. Um, conversion rate optimization, CRO, right? What do we do on our website so that our website converts better? How do we simplify the checkout process? Um, how do we design our product pages in such a way that they convert higher? So all of that. But then there's a lot of conversion that happens in email. So whoever didn't convert on the website right away, our job, like our literally luck and co's job is to get their email address and then try to convert them through our flows and through our campaign. So conversion can happen in many different places. But then the third part, which is probably has been the most overlooked historically, but thankfully brands are paying more attention to it now is retention. So once somebody bought and became a customer, what do I do to make them super happy, amazingly happy, yeah. and then bring them back and get them to buy with me again. Um, so that's, you know, that's like high level looking at marketing, e-commerce marketing in general. When it comes to email marketing, um, also super high level. First thing, get people's email address or phone number through a pop-up. So a pop-up is like at the top. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot do this where it translates to the camera. The pop-up is at the top and uh, like it drives everything in email. Like if I don't have your email address, I can't send you flows. I can't send you campaigns. So pop-up. And then under that, there's uh, flows, so automated email sequences, uh, and then campaigns. And um, it's not an acronym, but it's like a motto that we use at Luck & Co, which is everything that can be automated should be automated. So we pay a lot of attention to email flows and email automations, um, not only because you know, like it simplifies your job, it automates stuff and it automates your revenue, but also automations and flows uh, are the most personalized emails that you can send because you get a lot of customers and informate not, not necessarily customers visitors um users information um and data which you can use directly in those emails so meaning if they are viewing a product you know which product they're viewing and you can use the product name in your email that's not something you can do in a campaign so just um like by default by definition flows and automations can be very personalized and they're also very timely because you send those emails exactly at the time when the person is performing the action or around that time um and so they're just going to hit home really well with with your users with shoppers with customers so automate everything that you can and then after that move on to campaigns and with campaigns um the like again high level super important thing pay a lot of attention to segmentation don't blast your entire list um, figure like segmentation is something that a lot of 
founders struggle with. It's like, it's complex. It's not always straightforward, but I recommend figuring out segments. Like if you're doing email marketing by yourself uh, and you don't have a professional team helping you, take the time to figure out the segmentation. It, it's going to pay off. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know how to put this into an acronym. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you have to. I think that's awesome. That's really great. And one thing that I get from this, all of this, is to actually you have to start. You have to start at a certain point and then learn as you go as well, like pay attention to data and all of that. So that's really great. Uh, thank you, Casey. I have a question for you now, Jacob. Uh, you always mention, and you've mentioned already a couple of times about how onboarding and welcome emails are key for keeping clients. Any chance you could share three tips for nailing a welcome series? Sure. I mean, uh, Casey already gave us some tidbits there that I think should be drilled into marketers' heads, starting from segmentation. I mean, take time there. I mean, the the importance of a well-crafted email series is so crucial for creating a positive first impression and just fostering customer engagement from the get-go. So the first point I would definitely start with is... Uh, segmentation for personalization and i'll break it down there are three things right so i'll break it down by tactic and why it's effective so when you're segmenting your new subscriber base based on their preferences their behaviors or the source and from which they joined your email list just knowing that is going to give you more attention to detail and how you should be targeting your welcome emails that align with their interests on what they clicked or just how they discovered your brand. You make a more immediate and relevant connection. So for example, if a subscriber signed up through a promotion or a specific product category, you can tailor the welcome emails to highlight products in that category. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, I think another one is just gradually introducing them and educating your customer base. And as a tactic, designing a series of emails that gradually introduce new subscribers to your brands, products, just values overall. So provide helpful tidbits and guide them through different aspects of any product in your brand, if you're a multi-brand, how a different brand could actually help that user. And why this becomes effective is it becomes an opportunity to educate your new subscribers about what your uniqueness or your value that you offer comes out there and instead of you know overwhelming them with too much information in a single email as soon as they sign up or as soon as they show some side some side of interest which would essentially eventually hurt you i would say in the long run i think this could just include an introductory email about your brand story a follow-up highlighting your best-selling products or just tips on getting the most out of their purchases so simple things like that. And finally, I think incentivizing your audience sometimes helps. So incentives or exclusive offers. Now, how this can come in as a tactic is uh, you can gamify your emails with MailMoto. That's one, a little bit of a flex I'm doing there with MailMoto. But essentially, you have exclusive discounts, promotions, or an early access to a new product that's coming in. So just incentivizing your users from the beginning to engage more with that specific channel can go a long, long way. And why it's effective, it just offers or rather encourages your new subscribers to make that first purchase. So when Casey was talking about acquisition, then conversion, this is your perfect opportunity to personalize segment and then include an, include an incentive to convert. And yeah, that's, I mean, I guess those are three uh, tactics that I could share. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jacob. And now I would love to hear from you, Casey, about in maybe in some innovative strategies. You mentioned that a lot of times when people start using the hacks that uh, we start sharing, uh, they are not, uh, they stop working as well. But would you feel comfortable of, of sharing some of the hacks that you use most and that you've seen more effective with your clients? Yeah, I'll share some, <laughs> but let's, not all. Let's do those <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you think I can share my screen? Do I click present? Yeah. Will it work? Let's, I'm afraid yeah. to like 
break everything. If everything breaks, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but one hack that I wanted to share is that uh, interactivity that we've been adding to emails. Um, let me, I'm just gonna share the entire screen. Okay, let's see. Whoa, there's a lot, entire screen. There we go. Can you guys see yeah, the Tokimat email? Yes. Okay, so the thing we do, so like email, 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 blah, blah. <laughs> and then in this email, we're talking about their safety certifications, which for a lot of brands we work with, um, like they're very careful about envi the environment um, and safety and stuff like that. So how do we talk about all of these boring certifications and tell people what they mean in an effective way? So we designed this interactive way to do this directly in email. So it only shows up on Hover. And this type of thing allows us to pack a lot, like a lot more information into an email than it looks like from the first uh, glance. And that's important mm -hmm. because a lot of people like glance through the emails, right? If they see something that's scary because there's just like way too much, uh, they're not going to read. Um, here's another way in which we implemented that for another brand, Water eStore. So they talk a lot about water and the quality of water. And there's a lot of information that we need to give to people in emails. Again, how do we pack that into an email? We have uh, like this feature where people can get all of the info they need depending on what their water looks like if it's yellow if it's gray very fun if it's milky white water um and then like you can also apply this to like more typical dtc brands so apparel skin care and stuff like that like even when you're introducing different colors for your new product uh it can look this way and this gives people a chance to like actually spend some time with your email and interact uh, with it a little bit and then click around a little bit more. Oh my gosh, nice I love all stuff. of those. Yes, thank you so much for <laughs> okay, sharing great. that. That's so cool. So that makes, it, makes your email kind of look like a landing page. So that's awesome. And so we're close to Almost. wrapping up. I have yeah. one last question for you guys. Um, so what is the one tactic that everyone should go and try right now? Jacob, you go. <laughs> no, I'll, 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 <laughs> You're going to let I'm me building, go? <laughs> I'm building off of you, so you go first. <laughs> <laughs> what is one tactic, everybody? Well, I would like it would be good for me to say, like, go try this tactic that I just showed. <laughs> yeah. Go try building interactive emails. The stuff that we just saw, uh, it's like complex and advanced. It's not easy to make. A beginner wouldn't be able to make it um, like by themselves. But I'm sure if they use MailMoto, you guys probably offer a bunch of that stuff out of the box. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> go try <laughs> MailMoto and create some interactive emails. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, just to add on to that, try mail mode for sure. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> what I was rather saying is a tactic. Um, interactive emails, definitely. And like I said from the beginning of this, in just starting your welcome sequence with personalization. So, I mean, I, I don't think we have the time for me to present, but um, ideally, if you sign up for the free trial, you can just meet with our team. And one of the first things I essentially encourage all e-commerce D2C brands to do is have a simple interactive survey, just asking them or just have radio buttons, just asking them what caught their interest. And from the next email, you're hitting them with products and brands that are relevant to their interest. So just that simple action, I think will help you not just convert, but build your attention. So it's not just acquisition that we focus on it's also retention as well as conversion so you get all three with mail motto awesome thank you so much jacob and thank you casey we actually ha i had a lot of other questions for you there's this one that also came up but casey i'm gonna send this question your way and maybe you can answer that on linkedin or something like that i think that's also a pretty cool topic for you to discuss there and i know you're super active so whoever doesn't follow Casey yet and doesn't follow Jacob, please do, because uh, they're really great. They're always learning so much from them. Anyway, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing all thank you. So, so much knowledge. It was so great talking to you. And I hope to see you all soon. Likewise. Nice meeting you, Casey. Thanks for having me. Bye. Nice to meet you as well.
Okay. 